Hey YouTube family, it's your girl Nari Shea. Welcome back to my channel, to my oldies but goodies. And to those of you who are new, welcome. Feel free to stay. Click the subscribe button down below so you don't miss a thing when I make a new video. I am Narisha, a family nurse practitioner and a tattoo artist. And on my channel, I talk about all things nursing, lifestyle, beauty, and travel. So I know you guys have a little different feel. It's been a long time since I came on here. And yes, I did say I am a family nurse practitioner now. So, hey, your girl has upgraded, okay? Not that being a registered nurse is not such a great accomplishment that I have achieved over the past many years. I am a family nurse practitioner now, and I want to be able to find that. So hopefully that's not an issue for you guys. But yes, I have upgraded my credentials you guys so this is what i wanted to make my video about and i kind of just wanted to come back and let you guys know that i will be on social media a lot more on tiktok on instagram on youtube all of that because i know it's been months it's been months but i've been really really crunching down so i can get to this point to where i'm able to bring a new narisha to you guys let's just get into this video basically y'all know this is going to be a nursing video because i have to tell you guys all that i've gone through the past two and a half years because this has not been an easy process and where i plan to take my channel so, as i've previously announced i am a family nurse practitioner now i have not sat down for my boards just yet but i will be discussing with you guys what certification i decide to take and then of course we're just going to talk about what's been going on and where i've been let's just start with the rundown of the program so, and i went to chamberlain university i am alumna of chamberlain university for a second time so i've gone to i've gone through three different programs this is my third degree i got my associates of nursing um, from a school back in Virginia. That was my very first school. I did 17 months. And then I went to Chamberlain for the first time in 2019, early 2019. And I finished late 2019. So about 10 months to get my bachelor's. And then I finished with my master's at Chamberlain last week. It was a very rigorous program. Everything was online. So I had to learn on my own. I had to learn myself because no teacher was coming to teach me. Finding clinical sites, I had to do that myself. So how the program works at Chamberlain University, when you're in a master's program, all the first five, well, okay, so it's 15 courses that you have to take for family nurse practitioner. The first five are the general studies. So all master's program students are doing the same five classes. So in the beginning, at least. So that's like normally theory, nursing theory, um, stuff like that, just to get you acclimated to the policies and procedures and stuff like that of a master's prepared nurse regardless of what type so you can be clinical nurse you can be um management you can be in education you can be fmp and all of those all have the same five core classes in the beginning a full-time student you would do one eight-week class um every eight weeks one class every eight weeks and that's considered full-time but if you do two then of course like i said it's still full-time you doubling up whatever but i um y'all know i'm prior military so i was finishing off my gi bill before i i was just like i might as well because i'll be able to get the maximum out of this last little bit of gi bill that i have left after that i have to start paying student loans so i went and doubled up the first two classes which got me to two and a half years exact of my nursing program that one week that you have off that's technically called preview week at chamberlain and preview week is kind of like they give you all the information everything is open all of your modules are available most of the time the only thing that's not available are tests if they're like proctored or something like that but um everything is available for you to start working on if you want to of course it's not recommended that you start throwing out assignments and, you know, submitting them. But, you know, if let's just say you have a busy month and you want to go ahead and start working on the first three weeks of class within that one week time frame, do it. There's plenty of times when I was just like, you know what, this is going to be a busy month. The first two weeks I need to go ahead and work on now. And I would start working on my work. And then when week one came around, I will submit everything. And then week two came around, I already had it in a folder on my laptop and I was able to submit it. 
the preview week was very handy sometimes if i didn't utilize it i realized that i had a very hard semester or term and i was just like yeah i'm definitely going to utilize it for the next term each is own but i really did appreciate that part about chamberlain the next couple of classes that you have classes 6 through 15 are all track specific so you have your first five classes all core all msn student that takes those then you have the the rest of the 10 for fmp and then towards the last five that you have in the class those are your hands-on clinical it's not just didactic not just all classroom settings now you're getting hands-on experience you're going to pediatric rotations you're going to women's health rotations they want you to make sure that you see um all age groups any person in the lifespan you know when you go to your pediatric rotation i was seeing two week old kids i was seeing three day old kids you know so it really just depends but you have to do a full rotation with at least i want to say 90 something hours i think it's like 95 hours for um pediatrics but i did a full rotation and a full rotation usually is 125 hours so five of those 125 hours come out to 625 and um <laughs> i actually finished with 627 hours and like some change but those extra hours that I did, it don't count. I really don't care. It was just experience. I want to say I finished like two weeks ago with my last clinical rotation. And then Chamberlain has it to where you go. And for your last class, which is capstone, which is class I just finished, um, you have to sit down for an exam. It's an exit exam. It's just like taking the HESI or the T's exam, ATI, whatever it is um, when you're in nursing school. It's the same exact thing, same exact process. You'll sit down for it, you have to pass it, and you're a graduate. You still have to go and take your boards and everything else, but basically it's like a predictor exam. And it helps, I feel like it helps the school more than it helps you. It helps the school to be able to say, well, I passed this person, they passed this predictor, so I'm 100% sure, or I'm at least 90% sure that they can pass this because this was the standard and this is what they got. It kind of just helps with their pass rate because a lot of schools become credit you know credible you made sure that i could pass this exam and this exam is harder than the actual boards so you know it's it's a catch-22 but it is what it is and i feel like it will prepare people but you don't be wanting to go through that like you just like okay i did all of this like just let me have let me get out of here i'm done but that's the process that you take as an FMP student. Other than that, you do have to do a live review. I did go to Chicago last weekend because you have to sit down and actually listen to the presenters. They're pretty much the founders of the program that um, you're doing your exit exam through. They created the program and you know basically i feel like the school just buys their program and then say hey we're going to use this this is going to be the exit exam strategy that we get them to utilize before they go and take their boards whatever so these are the people that came out for us um we went to chicago they were able to teach us honestly it was the same stuff they gave us um modules they gave us videos they gave us you know, papers to print out, PDF papers to print out and write and everything. It was the same exact thing. So we went to Chicago and we got the same exact information that we got on the video modules that they made us watch. And, you know, by the time you finish watching everything, you get a certification at the end. It's the same thing. So you did one in class and you did one in person, basically. Um, and then you go home, you take your, your exit exam and you're done. So... Hopefully, within the next couple of weeks, I will be getting my degree in the mail. But, of course, I still have one more step that I got to do, which is take my boards. So, let's discuss what boards I'm going to take. Family nurse practitioners do have the option to take two different accrediting certifications. So, I can either become board certified or certified. And if I become board certified, I will be taking my ANCC. And if I become certified, I'll be taking my AANP. Hopefully I said that right. AANP and then ANCC. And one of them um, I'm more so leaning towards because I have been considering down the line, you know, I just think 
I think ahead on everything. But um, I, I've considered possibly one day getting my DMP. But it's only because I want to be able to teach. It's only because I want to be able to become a professor one day. Something that's a little bit more laid back. Something that I can um, utilize and have two streams of income. If I want to still work in a clinical setting. And if I want to just teach online. Then I wanted to be able to have that. And I know as a DMP you need that. But at the same time, um, becoming board certified will also allow me to do that because many universities prefer that you have a board certification over just a credential, just a credential of a certification. So the A N C C may be more of what I lean towards. Um, but I know a lot of people do not like to do the ANCC because the ANCC is 175 questions instead of 150. And then you have theory added into it. It's not just clinical questions. It's theory, background, professionalism, procedure, politics, and healthcare. And people don't be wanting to do all that. And I completely understand. But, and it's also a little bit harder when it's time to renew. It's like more things that you have to do with continuing education. I get it. I get it, but I feel like in the long run, it may be better for me and what I want to do because if I don't want to go back, if I don't end up going back for that DMP, I'm going to feel some type of way that I did not do a board certification and all I have to do is renew it. If I don't do this and just get board certified, I'm going to regret it. I think I'm leaning more towards the ANCC test, even though... It's 175 questions, it's theory, it's politics, it's professionalism, it's all kinds of stuff on top of clinical, and it's like all that apply. Because the AAMP is not all of that. The AAMP is 150 questions, you get your typical A, B, C, and D, you're in, you're out, whatever. But the ANCC is not like that. You are going to get everything. You're going to get drop down. You're going to get slide here, put it there, select all of the plot, I don't know. But I don't know. I'm going to be very upset with myself if down the line I say, no, I'm not going back to school. And then I can't become a professor or teach like I really want to. Um, but this is like a five plus year down the line type of idea. But it's still better to think about it now because this is my career. Like, this is my last career. Like, this is it. Like, I'm not changing careers. I'm done. And I'm going to be a family nurse practitioner forever, you know? So, it is what it is. Um, but with that being said, I did want to come on here and share with you guys that I am done with school. Um, it's a great, great feeling. I feel very overwhelmed because I didn't expect that. I I'm not going to lie to you guys. I did not expect that I was going to pass that exam. Um, only because I just felt like it was just so much going on and, um, close friends and relatives, they know that I had a very rocky end of the last year and start of this year. And it just has, it's, it's lingered. It's lingered the past few months. So over women, I know it was nothing but God, nobody and nothing but God. Um, but it's still just, you know, when you're in awe and you're just like, dang, like, I really went through all of this and I still graduated nursing school, master's program at that. So what am I going to do now? So let me just be honest with you guys, because for the past couple of months, since November, late November, I have been travel nursing. I've been loving travel nursing. I'm not going to lie to you. Truly, everybody needs travel nurses. And yes, travel nurse pay has gone down drastically. But baby, it is completely better than working as a staff nurse. And I'm sorry, it is. So... I've taken my many opportunities and I said, you know what? I'm going to become a travel nurse. I went and did my first travel assignment back in November and I've been there for six, seven months now. <laughs> They've just continued to extend my contract. And then I did get a second contract um, at a different location, a different hospital. I hated it. I told them, no, I just was not about to jeopardize my nursing license because I need my nursing license to have my F&P license. So I was like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. So um, I completely left that job alone. And then I decided that I was going to um, come to this come back to where I had been at. And so I came back to where I'm at now 
but I just got a call this morning for another position at a different location, a different location hospital. And um, I'm not sure if I love it or like it or hate it or whatever the case is, but it's an eight week contract. And like I say, I always think ahead. So it's some things that I'm thinking about when it comes to studying and getting ready for my boards and stuff like that. And it's just eight weeks, then why not? So we shall see. But I am going to make videos moving forward about um, travel nursing versus MP, what I plan to do with my MP, what I'm doing now that I'm um, graduated. Um, this hair is just so cute. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, what I'm gonna do now that I'm graduated, um, I'm gonna be blogging a lot more. A lot is about to take off on this channel, baby, okay? So, please stay tuned, you guys. Again, I'm just gonna apologize straight up that I have been missing, but I'm back. I'm back and I'm ready to make content, okay? So, if there's anything that you guys wanna see or wanna hear me speak about or that y'all want me to bring information and bring light to please let me know because i mean yes i've been a nurse but i ain't no newbie okay i'm not a baby nurse anymore and yes i'm an fmp now i'm a family nurse practitioner now you guys all right the video is long enough i will talk to you guys in the next video please stay tuned again if you have not already subscribed please do and i will talk to you in my next video bye